Thank you, Tigas. I'm Nick. Surprise, surprise, there's a new card in town, and this was probably the worst kept secret ever. And if you're seeing this in your sub box, thanks for taking time to watch our video because there's probably going to be heaps in your sub box. Nvidia sent over one of their brand new RTX 3080 Ti. Sorry, I mean, it's not a Ti anymore, is it? Yeah, okay. That's better. Their RTX 3080 Ti Founders Edition for us to check out, so we decided to run it through our regular suite of benchmarks in both Windows and Linux and see how this card stacks up against some other GPUs that we've had through the studio. Let's check it out and let's take off this tie. To kick this off, we've got no idea about availability or whether or not you're going to actually be able to buy these cars anytime soon or if you're going to be able to get them at launch, but the launch date is apparently now or maybe it's tomorrow. But yeah, I really have to stress that this is all subject to availability and it seems as though the stock shortages will continue to be the trend well into 2022. With that said, there's a lot of data to unpack in this video and there's chapters in all of our GPU videos. So if you wanna to jump to a certain section of a video, it's as easy as mousing over the progress bar or checking out the timestamps in the description of this video. Also, make sure you watch the whole video to get the context of what I'm trying to say in this video. These are also the out of the box figures. All of our GPU videos are designed to be this way because the vast majority of people just won't overclock their GPUs. This is way more indicative of real world users and for people who want to know how these overclock, when we actually, maybe if we get other board partners versions, we're going to do a separate video with overclocking because I think there's a bit of potential with these cards. All right, let's get the benchmarks comparisons out of the way. These graphs are weighted based on the performance of the cards that we're not focusing on from our entire database. These graphs change because cards perform differently and some cards get knocked down off the graphs and we use our regular test bench for this testing as well, just to give you guys really accurate results. We also decided that after the 11th gen Intel stuff launched, that we would not be changing this hardware for a while because there wasn't much difference between generations. So let's start off with Shadow of the Tomb Raider. You can use that magic pause button at any time during this video to take a look at these graphs for a little bit longer. Let's jump in. The first thing you're probably noticing, even with the 1080p benchmark, that the 3080 Ti, or Ti, is slightly faster than the 3080 and sits between the 3080 and 3090 in most tests. And this is really going to be the trend that you're going to see through this whole video. So a little bit of a spoiler alert. When we compare Windows to Linux, we're seeing the Linux performance slightly better than it is with Windows the Vulkan versus the X12. This is usually the case with this benchmark. This usually happens with this game in particular as well, especially with all the other cards on the graph too. At 1440p, we're seeing a pretty small uplift compared to the 3080. It is enough for it to be considered faster and it does lay outside that margin of error. In Linux, the 3080 Ti, or Ti, <laughs> I'm gonna keep rolling with that joke, is a little bit faster than the 3090, but it's mostly to do with driver versions and the differences between the kernels used between testing this hardware in particular. At 4K, we're seeing the same results being echoed with both Windows and Linux. So nothing too surprising here. Let's move on to Unigen Superstition. For these tests, we performed three tests in total. We use a 4K optimized preset, 1080p extreme, and a custom 1440p preset with depth of field and motion blur turned off. We sometimes get comments along the lines of like, why do you compare DX11 to OpenGL? We're just comparing the out of the box experience only. First up with the 1080p Extreme Benchmark, this one is highly GPU bound and we're seeing the 3080 Ti or Ti pull right away from the 3080. That's gonna get annoying really quickly. I should just pick one, Claire. Which one should I go with, Ti or Ti? Ty sounds easier. In Linux, the OpenGL version does not perform as well, and that's just how it is with Linux, regardless of the kernel or the driver being used, which if you're watching the Linux version of this video, I will explain that. At 
At 1440p in Windows, the 3080 Ti is sitting right between the 3080 and 3090 again. In Linux, the 3080 Ti is faster than the 3090, and we retested this with the Founders 3090 as well, and we saw the same results being echoed. And I'm actually not sure what's going on here, but I thought I'd include this for you anyway. What's more interesting though is that both the 6800 XT and the 6900 XT absolutely destroy the 3080 Ti at 1440p. I thought that was pretty interesting. At 4K, we're seeing the same thing happen in Windows that we saw with the 1080p Extreme Benchmark as well. In Linux, at 4K, the 3080 Ti equals the 3090 in performance and the 6900 XT beats it out by a single frame. Next up is Basemark GPU. Basemark gives us a great indication of Vulkan performance in both Windows and in Linux. At 1080p in Windows, we're seeing that the 3080 Ti cracks that 500 FPS barrier that we just couldn't get out of the 3080. In Linux, we're seeing the same thing happening at 1080p with the 3080 Ti, only being about four frames slower than the 3090. At 1440p in Windows, it shows the 3080 Ti sitting right in the middle of the 3080 and the 3090. So again, the same type of trend here. In Linux, we're seeing the same result being echoed with the 3080 Ti sitting right in the middle of the 3080 and 3090 again. And this is what you'll find with most benchmarks with this GPU, even the ones that we don't cover here. I, I suspect it's gonna be the same. And finally at 4K, we're seeing the same thing being echoed once again in both Windows and Linux. We ran our one hour stress test and we couldn't get the 3080 Ti above 72 degrees in our 18 degree climate controlled office. Be aware though, as I always say in this video, is that we run on an open air test bench. In a closed system, the results will be far different from what we observed here. We also include this result because our open air test environment is consistent with everything that we've ever tested across the board. As far as power consumption, we observed it hitting a board power draw maxing out at 349 watts at full load over a period of one hour. And that's actually what I expected from this card. It does draw less power than our ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3080 OC. I would have compared it to the Founders Edition 3080, however, we never received one, so it's impossible for me to do that. We also observed the 3080 tie to be audible in our stress testing period, tiny bit of coil whine, but you also have to remember, this is an open air test system and you're gonna hear absolutely everything. In a closed system, you're probably not gonna hear this card at all. Now these acoustic observations make way more sense for a normal user because most of the numbers just don't make sense to a regular punter. They're just numbers on a screen. They don't make any degree of sense. And acoustics are only really tangible if the card's in your system and sitting right next to you. But you're not gonna be able to buy this card anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Now, it's a relatively long two slot card that is the same dimensions as the Founders Edition 3080, as you can see here, yeah, it's, real, it's, it's pretty long. But personally for builds, I prefer working with cards like this because they're a bit more versatile and they're easy to fit in small systems, especially because it's, well, let me get some light on there, look at that. It's only two slots. And I suspect people who will buy this card in particular will build with smaller systems. But let's be honest though, you're not gonna be able to buy this card, not at all. And this leads me into my thoughts on this card. Yeah, the performance of this thing is slightly better than the 3080, but there's almost no reason to talk about this because you're not gonna be able to buy this. You ready, Claire? Yeah. You ready for ranty mode? Yeah. Whew, okay, let's do a countdown. Three. Two, one. I find it pretty insane that Nvidia thought it was a good idea to release another new GPU in the current global climate. It just doesn't make sense to me and here's why. 
Now, they're pushing their data center business way harder and not to defend Nvidia, but it makes sense for them because they're making way more money. And if you looked at the keynote that they did for Computex, just, it was a couple hours ago from this, but whenever you saw it, you'll notice it's mainly data center focus. This is the same business model that both Intel and AMD use as well, except Nvidia is doing what they did in the early 2000s with GPUs. If you create a market, you essentially invent the pricing. Now, they, they're doing this again in the data center, but how does this relate to you as a gamer or a regular consumer? Okay. Now, every single day, our comment section is filled with comments from people saying stuff like, I can't buy this card, or you won't even be able to buy this card when it comes out. And I'm gonna agree, it's absolutely true. Now, I'm not saying this to be an alarmist, I'm saying this because it's now June 2021. The initial 30 series GPU launched in September 2020. People couldn't get them then, and they still can't get them now. In fact, I've spoken to friends who pre-ordered the cards back in September 2020, and they're still yet to receive their cards. Not only that, we saw a boom in mining that pushed the demand well above the supply to the point where Nvidia even tried to add hardware level mitigation so mining wasn't profitable. You know what though? It didn't matter. Mining operations just doubled down and bought more cards. People also forget that there is a pandemic that's happening or they think it's finished. Well, that completely crippled fabrication. And on top of that, combining all of these factors, the GPU prices still continue to soar because if you can control the market, you can put any price on the hardware and people will buy it. Now, this isn't exclusively Nvidia's fault, but there should be some level of responsibility to the consumer, but because Nvidia and their board partners are not governments, or they're not government bodies, although they can be regulated, they can do whatever they want. Again, I'm not defending Nvidia. I'm just stating the facts. Now, if you take all of these factors into account, and I think I'm being a little bit heavy handed, but I think it's justified. The 3080 Ti or Ti should have launched towards the end of the year when they could guarantee supply and demand and when supply and demand could be as close to parity as possible. I don't have a, a crystal ball in my hand and I, I can't tell you for sure that you won't be able to buy this, but given what we know and what we've seen, it's almost guaranteed that you will not be able to buy this GPU. As far as pricing, the NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti or Ti Founders Edition, we're going for around $1199 US dollars at the time of filming. Obviously, this is, again, subject to availability, which in Australia for Founders cards is usually zero regardless of a silicon shortage. We've got no idea if you'll be able to get any of these at launch, but I suspect the AIB versions will be easier to get, but they're gonna be priced way higher than the Founders Edition given what we've seen with the other 30 series cards. Let us know what you think about the 3080 Ti. I honestly uh, don't feel comfortable talking about these GPUs. Although I'm just gonna continue to cover them because I have a hope that one day soon, prices will drop and you'll be able to find videos like this one helpful. Now, the current global climate has really made it hard for me to get excited about new tech and it's made it really hard for us tech YouTubers as well, despite us apparently having all of the stock in the world, Claire. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Make sure you check out our kernel control video that will launch at the same time as this. There's got some more Linux based stuff that you probably didn't see if you're watching the Gear Seekers video, but if you're watching the kernel control video, you already know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anyways, if you like this video, you know what to do. Hit that dislike button twice. That's if you liked the video. Also hit the like button and the dislike button twice and tell us what you hated about it and or tell us what you liked about it. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick, with Gear Seekers and Kernel Control. You peek, we seek. And we don't have an th outro thing for Kernel Control yet. Yeah, that's awkward. I just know what you guys really think. I'm very confused by the timing of this. See, for me, maybe September or January 2022 would have made more sense for like CES, but I don't know. There's gonna be heaps of other people complaining about this at launch too. Guaranteed, I'm not the only one. It's very hard when you make videos like this, Claire, because mm. you can't validate what you're gonna say with anyone else. No. You just have to say how you feel. 
That's how I feel. Thanks for watching.